channel. It's a really snowy day out there today and um, despite the snow I'll probably I'll probably be staying home all day but I wanted to show you my Dendrobium anosmum orchid. So I got this to bloom recently and what I want to do today is show you how I care for this orchid and how I got it to bloom. So I, um, I got this orchid from Carmilla Orchids back in July. It was a seedling orchid. I got it actually from their fragrant box. They have a really nice special for $68. I think it's 12 different orchids that you get. And I got two Dendrobium anosmums in it. When I first got it, I was not very confident that I'd be able to get it to bloom because I always saw videos on, um, on them basically growing in Florida. Most folks grow them outdoors and they mount them on trees. And then I saw those pendulous canes with tons of flowers, so I wasn't very confident that I'd be able to get it to bloom indoors. So I was actually surprised. I just read up on its care, and I'll share how I got it to bloom. So let's take a closer look. So this orchid is a um, pretty widely distributed orchid. I've, I did a little bit of research and found that um, it grows um, from New Guinea to the Philippines to Thailand, Vietnam. So it's pretty widely distributed. It grows uh, sea level and it also grows in some higher elevations. So there's a lot of different varieties. This one is called the Dendrobium anosmum white. Some folks also call it the uh, Alba form. And um, it's very fragrant in terms of how it grows. It grows on canes. And when I got it, which I'll put a picture up for you guys to see it, it was a seedling with um, quite a lot of leaves and the cane grew taller. So, I mean, my biggest concern with growing a pendulous orchid on my grow shelves is that it was going to uh, take up a lot of space. So what I ended up doing was staking it, and I find that when the canes are soft, you're able to do this. I obviously did not uh, stake it on time since it's a little bit twisted, but I have another Dendrobium anosmum that's much straighter that I was able to stake just on time. So... These orchids can get pretty large. When grown outdoors, they can get up to three feet, three to four feet tall. Um, indoors, you don't have to really worry too much about it. They won't get that large. At least I don't think they'll get that large with indoor conditions. Ideally, they like uh, 70 to 90% humidity. I'll put a link down below where I got this information from. I obviously don't have 70 to 90% humidity, but I grow this in uh, some sphagnum moss. And I, did, I chose sphagnum moss because this was a young seedling and I always like to give them a little bit more moisture. And that gives a lot more humidity for the root zone. There's a lot of different forms of this orchid. I also have the little sweet scent and that one's supposed to be like a pinkish color, um, but the alba and semi-alba forms can range from being white to white and purple, um, white and pink. Um, there's a lot of different variations for this species orchid, but let's get into how I care for it indoors and how I got it to bloom. So um, essentially this orchid grows actively through the summer, through the spring and summer months, and then um, in the fall they stop growing, and then eventually they lose their leaves. So this is a deciduous orchid. So what I did when I noticed it stopped growing in the fall is I stopped giving it water. And over time, I just basically slowed it down. I didn't do it very quickly. I slowed it down and then I noticed that the leaves started yellowing a bit. After I slowed down around September, I just gave it a rest for about a month without giving it water and the leaves fell off. That said, the dry winter rust is not a bone dry winter rust, so I did give it a little trickle of water here and there every two weeks or so. And then I gave it, my grow shelves have uh, temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees in the winter, and then um, they get like a 10 degree temperature drop at night. So it was getting to about, depending on the day, 70 to 60 degrees lower at night. And then I noticed um, buds started forming. I thought they were cakeys, to be honest, just because I felt that I don't have very much experience with this orchid, but they surprised me and uh, came out with some buds that look like peppers. So they started developing. 
and about a week ago these uh these orchids the uh, blooms started opening up now i'll say these look a little bit funky and probably because it's a first time bloomer and also um they they do look I, I did see a video on this. I think it was Todd's Tropical where he said that the white Alba version doesn't always open up very fully. And I'll say that these are very, very wonky looking flowers as you can see here. So we'll see how it, how it uh, develops next time, but it looks a little bit twisted. Now that said, they look like a frilly flower, but when you actually touch them, they're a pretty waxy flower. They're supposed to last anywhere from three weeks to a month, we'll see. Uh, but given the thickness of this uh, leaf, it's surprisingly waxy, it'll probably last a full month. Um, I do give it bright light. So these are under, under um, they were under these Monio's high output lights and I had it hanging really close to the, the lights. They were probably about six to eight inches away from the lights. And um, so it was getting a decent amount of artificial light. Um, so I keep the light pretty bright, even though it's under grow lights, they were quite close, just hanging very close to the, um, the actual source of light lighting. Um, in terms of uh, fertilization, I give it a, a weak dilute strength uh, fertilizer in the summer and then I throttle that back when I stop watering. So I just gave it water in the fall and the winter. I think the biggest uh, key to success for this one was the winter rest that I gave it. So I, I again, I slowly throttled back the water. And then as I saw the uh, buds form, I reintroduced the water. I did give it the dry period, but I did give it a little trickle. So I don't think that it's detrimental to give it um, a little bit of water and when you think about where these grow um, in their different regions it's not it, the rain isn't going to stop there's going to be less water in the winter season but it's not going to fully stop uh, raining um, in terms of the fragrance this one's actually pretty nice so a lot of folks say it smells like uh, raspberries for me when this first um, opened up it smelled like juicy fruit gum to me I really, really liked it. Um, the fragrance changed a little bit one week later. It still smells pretty sweet. I do understand why some folks say this smells like strawberries. Um, but what I really like about it is that it has a very hairy lip, as you could see right here. This is really, really cool. Um, I, it, it, the fragrance, I smell it um, as soon as I enter the room. So I think that's probably one of the best uh, parts of this orchid is that wonderful fragrance flowers again are a little wonky not sure if this is a white alba form uh, issue or if it's a first time blooming issue but as you can see there's pretty much just two canes here um, so this is a very very young orchid and i am finding that soft cane orchids are more likely to bloom younger for you than some of the harder cane orchids so after they flower, the research that I, I did um, shows that they start producing new canes at the base. So for the spring, we'll probably see new uh, shoots coming from the bottom of the base. And um, yeah, I'm not letting this grow pendant just because of space issues. Um, so I'm gonna probably stake them up and you can do it while they're still soft. They do harden off though. So if you don't get them to get staked up, they will, you, you won't be able to bend them very much. Anyhow, I really like this orchid. I'm very surprised I was able to get it to bloom indoors. I was honestly not expecting I was able to, but ultimately the key to success, I think, was giving it a dry winter rest, giving it slightly cooler temperatures at night. I've read that you shouldn't go below 50 degrees. These aren't like the nobly type dendrobiums that can really take almost just above a frost. These like it a little bit warmer. So I think if you're growing indoors, provided you're giving this orchid bright conditions, um, put it close to your lights and that'll help get those, um, I love this frilly lip. <laughs> if you give it those uh, bright conditions, I think it's gonna be fine. Just respect the lighter um, 
give it a winter rest, give it less water in the fall, give it a little break from water, but you can give it a trickle. It's not a, a completely bone dry winter, just less, uh, less watering. Anyhow, I hope this video was helpful. I didn't think I could grow these, but it, it's not too hard to grow them indoors. You just have to respect their growth pattern and then you'll be rewarded with a beautiful wonky little uh, orchid with um, a really, really nice fragrance. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more care updates like this for growing indoors. Take care, everyone. Bye.